With another episode of the Sheehan Show, and this week's a massive, massive week for the world of Irish mixed martial arts as Bellator bring their middleweight title fight to the Emerald Dial as the legend Gegard Mousasi takes on the up and coming phenom Austin Vanderfort in the main event. No gems Gallagher this time around. We have, uh, without a shadow of a doubt, the two best Irish female fighters in the world at the moment. Uh, and uh, and a few more after that as well. And some very, very good Irish talent, which I suppose is the area of expertise you would expect from an Irishman. So I'm going to talk a lot about that. And I'm going to talk a little bit about the uh, the main event as well. So this card is on on Friday night in, in the tree arena. And as everyone knows, the tree arena is that kind of iconic pint depot, as we used to call it, uh, before it got... Uh, uh, taken away by the uh, the sponsor masters, <laughs> I suppose, and uh, of tree, um, and you know it's it's on the magical night of of Bernard Dunn uh, winning his world title of Conor McGregor, uh, you know beating Diego Brando when all five or six was an Irishman that night got the got the big wins and you know as I mentioned Peter Queeley's big massive walkouts to Zombie and Ashton Daly back in the day and you know classics like the the Cahill Pindred um, comeback against Mike King some great nights for combat sports over the years and hopefully we'll have another one here again you know I, I was talking to, to some Irish people around the place and talking uh, on, on some other podcasts as well about sometimes we kind of take it for granted here and, and uh, you know, the, the middle of title of Bellator being on the line is something that's maybe been overlooked because of the Irish talent on the card. And there's some very, very good Irish talent on the card, you know, and a, a magical matchup, I suppose, between Sinead Kavanagh and Liam McCourt. I spoke to, to both of them. There'll be interviews with both of them on, on Sherdog and on this YouTube channel uh, this week. And they might be already out or if they're not, they will be coming uh, very, very soon. So it was, uh, it, that's a massive fight. But we, we will get to that uh, as we go. I'm going to start from the bottom of the card, pick out maybe the few Irish fighters that are on it, talk about a couple of the other fights, and uh, and we'll, we'll, we'll keep going through it, and then I'll, I will get to uh, to the main event. Maybe I'll leave the Lee and Sinead one. I feel like that's kind of the people's main event, and maybe I'll leave that to last, but we'll get through it here. The first guy I want to talk about in this card is Lee Hammond, and he's fighting Jamie Hay. Now, Jamie Hay is a guy out of out of the UK. Uh, he's 2-0 and as a professional so far, and both of the guys he's fought are you know not the best in the world i think one is 0 7 one is 0 and 5 or something like that but at the end of the day you can only kind of beat what's in front of you so this will be a bigger test for him now lee hammond if you don't know lee hammond uh he's been one of conor mcgregor's main training partners for years and years and years he used uh training the old sbg gym back in the day with the yellow canvas and all that and he's known kind of predominantly uh as the kind of one of the best jiu-jitsu players in sbg uh for years so you know and he's had a very good amateur career as well he has won fights by knockout and stuff before any he's amateur and he, you know always well rounded but known as a jiu-jitsu guy then he made his pro debut last year only a few months ago and he came out and he looked absolutely phenomenal on the feet there was no jiu-jitsu if any in that fight looked smooth was sliding around the canvas landing some beautiful shots beautiful combinations a lovely jab and everything like that and I think everyone in Irish MMA having known the prior um, you know way people talked about Lee Hammond in terms of how great his ground game was to see a great stand up game as well I think gave everyone a little bit of oh this is a guy we really need to, to take account of and, 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 and look at going forward and he was always that anyway but I think making that pro debut taking that next step and looking that good you have to take note of Lee Hammond so he uh, you know according to the, the card here and you never know what Bellator they move things around last week Brendan Ward was in the middle of the prelims and he ended up being like third from the top so you never know what Bellator but it looks like Lee Hammond is opening the card here and what an opener like he's arguably arguably the the prospect on this card from Ireland that you would probably be most looking forward to and I'm definitely looking forward to seeing Lee Hammond uh, in uh, fight in, in person I think for the first time unless maybe I saw him as an, as an amateur but I don't think I did uh, really really looking forward to this and as I said on the feet on the ground this definitely is a guy if you you know if there's anyone from this card I think to, to keep an eye on as an, uh, an up and comer Lee Hammond is definitely the one um, further up the card in there's a very interesting fight between Nathan Kelly and, and Scott uh, Pedersen uh, Scott Pedersen has had a few fights in cage wires and it's very hard to know what kind of fighter Scott Pedersen is because his fights have been very either dominant against him or dominant for him and lots of grappling and things like that it's hard to tell if he's even an orthodox or a southpaw fighter he's one of those but a, a guy who won't give up fought Matthew Elliott who's arguably the top prospect in cage wars at the moment or one of them anyway um 
you know, apart from maybe the champions and things, um, and went in there, you know, and, and has had definitely tough matches. And Nathan Kelly as well, you know, he's had maybe a mixed time so far in as a, as an amateur and pro, but you know training out of SPG I'm sure he'll be ready for this one and he has knockout power as well and big hands so that'll be an interesting one I would like to see that stay on the feet for a little bit for kind of both guys especially like even Pedersen to, to give a bit more of a, an inkling of, of what he's like on the feet and what kind of fighter he is all around so I think um, you know that one is, is a one I'm not sure how it'll go to be honest but I'm looking forward to seeing it uh, didn't Dara Kelly uh, making his pro debut here um, if you go on online and watch some of Dara's amateur fights, they're up there, and you can just tell he is so strong and so good in all areas. He hits like dynamite, very, very good takedown defense, or very good takedowns as well, actually, against the cage. Won the uh, Severe Amateur of the Year, I think it was two years ago now at this stage. Uh, so he has that potential. He has, you know... Um, he has uh, that kind of backing behind him of a very, very good amateur career as well. He was supposed to fight Junior Morgan at the last card. I believe Junior Morgan slipped over in the uh, in, in the bathtub as he was uh, preparing or cutting weight maybe or something for that and uh, ended up out of that fight. So it's good to get this one uh, back going. Junior Morgan is um, 3-0, so he's more experienced than Derek Kelly, but a very, very good even matchup. I'm looking forward to, to seeing that one. And Derek Kelly as well is definitely a guy who could emerge as, uh, as a prospect out of um, Vladimir Tokov versus Daniel Skatizi. We know uh, Tokov is the brother of Anatoly Tokov, um, and Skatizi been fighting out of SPG for a good while. Gokhan Sakram had a very good win the last time, uh, heavyweight, and he is fighting Kirill Slidnikov uh, on this one as well. So you, you know, you know what you're going to get from uh, a Bellator prelim heavyweight fight. You probably uh, you probably know what you're going to get there. And a, a two kind of cards, or two fights that are kind of stuck in this card that you would barely even know about, barely even hear about, but they're very, very good uh, fights. Uh, and those are Charlie Leary versus Davy Gallen. Two lads have been around the scene for a long, long time. Charlie Leary had a magnificent win over Kiefer Crosby. Uh, well, it was probably well, maybe 18 months ago at this stage, but he is very good. His hands are so crisp. Really, really good fighter. And Davy Gallen, you know, upwards of close to 30 fights now um, so that's a big big match up there and a, and a fun fight and as is Brett Johns versus Kushid Kakarov uh, Kakarov's only 8 and all, but I haven't watched his fights He big head kicks hits hard go to wrestling and Brett Johns look we all know what Brett Johns is like having been in the UFC uh, can do it all you know Brett John's a really really good uh, submission artist really good on the ground but can hit as well and that's you know that's a fight that that if it was in the UK, maybe it would be a main card fight, probably, uh, because of the kind of reputation Brett Johns has. But in in Ireland, maybe not. And it's funny you you look at this is the card Bellator sit out cards elsewhere. I'm sure not, it's hard to know who's actually going to be on Bellator. Fabian Edwards was announced for the card. Uh, we got no email, no nothing about it. Next thing, Fabian Edwards is fighting Leona Machida in London. So I, I, I don't know. It just his fight just disappeared off the face of the earth. So keep that in mind as you're watching this. These fights could happen. They might not happen. Let's <laughs> let, let's see. Well, I got to preview them all anyway, and uh, and talk a little bit about them. So, um, those are the, the biggest car fights on the undercard, apart from maybe the, the top two fights. I would say on the undercard, which I want to concentrate on a little bit more. Um, first of all, I want to talk about Kieran Clark, who is four and all now. Um, you know, a guy who's faced the loss in his life, I suppose. Um, who. Never has an easy fight in Bellator. You know, to get the four and I've, I think I've, I've probably watched all of his fights, but his last fight, especially in Bellator, just a tough slog. This guy, he has all the skills in the world. You know, very, very, very good, skillful fighter. But you can't, you can't beat heart. You know, and you can't beat will and all of that. And that's what Kieran Clark has. And you know, sometimes we, we all, I've heard the phrase before. You, um, to weaponize cardio. I think he. Kieran Clark is very good cardio can do that but I think he can weaponize his toughness as well and you know maybe not, that's not the best thing to do over a over whole career but when you are you know as tough as him it's a very good way but he, he's a opponent he's not getting an easier one again from Bellator and a lot of people over the last you know maybe five years or however long Be Bellator slash Bama have been uh, bringing Irish cards they've said Irish guys have gotten easier matchups now that certainly wasn't the case the last time when James Gallagher and Peter Queeley both got beaten in the, in the co-main event uh, uh, co-main event and main event and this certainly isn't the case 
uh, this week indeed or the, the guys I've already named there have tough matchups I think Kieran Clark is a very very tough matchup here uh, against Abubakar uh, Tunkara I watched a couple of his fights he's 7-2 and two, 6 of those are by KO but he's a well rounded fighter he can fight everywhere he's good takedowns push you against the cage hit very hard moves very hard as well looks big for the weight you know it's always tough until they, they stand opposite each other to see it because you never know if the guy he's fighting might have been 5 foot 2 and he, <laughs> and he looks way bigger like so You'd never know, but to me, he looks big for the weight, and uh, that's another, another tough test for Kieran Clark. Like, Kieran Clark's not getting anything easy off Bellator. You know, some people in the past may, maybe have, uh, as, as we alluded to, but he absolutely isn't. And there's a reason why, at the moment, that fight is at the top of the prelim car because, you know, he's a. Uh, a very very good fighter and I think a lot of him there and, and he is one I think in the future that, that could break through but this is a this is a tough matchup um, and the other fight I want to mention as well is Danny McCormack if maybe you're thinking who's Danny McCormack I know uh, Danny Nealon she got married in the last couple of months so her, she's McCormack now so the Mac is back here Danny McCormack she's 5-0 in her career as strawweight and as everyone probably knows Bellator don't actually have a strawweight division so they're putting on fights for Danny and I think they've done a great job uh, getting her that experience putting on those five fights but I don't think she's going to be moving to 125 anytime soon not full time anyway um, so it'd be interesting to, to hear what she does she did an interview uh, with Severe May the other day um, you know and she was kind of talking about that and she's alluded to I remember I asked the last time uh, as well about like you win a few more fights and kind of go to the UFC because they don't have the division and that's a tough thing to say for any Bellator fighter to say oh yeah I want to you know use this as a step into the UFC because in, at the end of the day you know it's Bellator paying your uh, <laughs> paying your, your uh, I was going to say wages wages is not the word is it your match fee maybe is that the word? I don't know your purse that's that's it um but um I'm sure like if Danny wins this fight and I think she maybe she has one more in her contract after that she can win that as well I think she deserves to be in the UFC. I think she's good enough to be in the UFC. But this fight on Friday night is the toughest matchup of her career, I think, to date. She's fighting uh, Stephanie Page. Um, and if you go and, and look her up on, on YouTube, there's four or five for fights. And you can see maybe a little bit more, which I'll, I'll allude to in a second. But there's um, uh, a highlight reel of her throwing head kicks and throwing big shots. And this lady can strike. She hits hard. If you give her the space, she can knock you out in a second. And she's a very, very, very good fighter on the feet. Now, if you if you kind of rush her, get inside against her, maybe not as good on the ground as well. Not the best in the world. Not the best at getting up. Maybe doesn't have the best jiu-jitsu in the world. And I'm sure Danny will be looking to get inside, land big shots inside, and uh, and take her down, and maybe get a submission, or maybe get the finish with ground and pound. But I think um, I think if Danny stays on the outside against Stephanie, she'll have problems. And it's not just Danny. I think anyone that that division, when you look at her and you see her striking uh, background, you see her uh, any of her fights, she is very, very dangerous. And you can't play games against a fighter as good as that. And, you know, she's eight fights as well against Danny. Like, it's been it's been tough for Bellator. They've done a good job, but it's been tough to get matchups for Danny. Someone as good who's not signed to a promotion, you know, uh, who's willing to go to Bellator uh, when, when maybe the, the UFC is, is open and, and looking for people in that division. But it's been a it's been a great great uh, experience for Danny. I think in in Bellator she's done great, and she, you know she's done great for them as well as well as herself. But um, yeah, this is this is definitely a tough fight. Um, I think Stephanie's is moving way class as well. And this is her first fight at strawweight, if I'm not mistaken. Um, or certainly you know back to strawweight if she has fought there before, uh, but she definitely fought more recently in in different weight classes. So you know she'll be, I'm sure she'll be moving better and healthier at that weight class as well. That to me, like that could be a standout fight in the undercard. It's one. It's a look. It's a very simple fight. If if Danny is able to get inside, push her against the cage, take her down, <clears throat> I think it'll be Danny McCormick's fight all day. If not, Stephanie's dangerous, and she can <clears throat> she can land big shots from the outside and uh, and trouble anyone in that division. So. Big, big fight for Danny McCormick there. As someone who's, you know, joining this group of undefeated fighters coming through, if she can go to 6-0, that, that's a big, that's a big thing. Like, that's a big, big step and a massive fight for her here. So really, really looking forward to that. And Danny's definitely kind of uh, emerged as, as one of the one of the prospects to watch in Ireland over the last couple of years. Um, there's another fight listed here. I don't, Bellator don't have it listed, but I don't know if it's happening or not. Uh, Kazan Megamed Sharapov against Joseph Sanchez. I don't think it is because Bellator would surely have us. I think that one will fall now, but you never know. They could walk out on Friday night. And we'll see. You never know with with uh, with Bellator. But let's talk about the um, the main card. Brian Moore versus Jarnell Lugo opens up the main card. Then. 
uh, and that is a very, very, very interesting fight. Lugo, uh, I think he was ranked recently, if I'm not mistaken. I'm looking at the, the card here, and it doesn't say he is, but may maybe, maybe he fell out of him. But this is an important fight at the bantamweight division because obviously the the bantamweight tournament is coming up, and both of these lads aren't in it. And someone will have to emerge, you know, outside of it. We have Brett Johns on the card here as well. Uh, I think Josh, uh, what's his name, Josh Hill. Yeah, isn't in it either so you could see a bit of a round robin emerging there and whoever wins in those fights could emerge as like after two or three fights in a year's time maybe 18 months as the person to meet the winner of that tournament so i think it's a big opportunity for the guys in the tournament but also a big opportunity for the guys outside of the tournament to kind of make their way in and make themselves the number one uh, pretender i suppose for the title or contender even for the title uh when uh when all the rest of it kind of shakes out. And for Brian Moore, this is kind of a big name in Bellator that he was looking for. He got a very, very tough matchup the last time out over in Russia, two weeks before the last Dublin card, which to me was more senseless matchmaking. But this is very good matchmaking. Uh, Lugo hits very hard from the outside. He's another guy who likes to come in... Fights out of Southpaw in one fight, fight, fights out of Orthodox in another fight. You never know what you're going to get from him. Whereas Brian Moore, over the last few years, has become, you know, arguably the best boxer in, in Irish MMA, save Conor McGregor. Um, his lovely technique, beautiful jabs, lovely combinations. Does a lot of training by himself. He lives down in Wexford, which is a good drive up from uh, up to Dublin even. Um, and he does it, you know, as I said, he trains a lot by himself. He has his own gym down there. He's a family in a house and everything. So he can't get up and be in SPG, you know, three times or two times a day like everyone else. But he finds a way to do it. And he's found a way. And John Cavanagh has even kind of said this, that he's alluded to that uh, Brian Moore has become a, a great fighter in a way he never thought someone could become a great fighter. And it's it's very interesting, very intelligent that you see someone like Brian Moore being able to do that. And that would, would be one thing I would definitely say about Brian Moore. I think he's one of the most intelligent fighters we've, we've seen in Ireland. Um, and with that skill, if he can put both those things together and produce it on the night... You know, he has the he, ha he absolutely has the win in this fight. I think Lugo will probably be favourite, and probably rightly so, you know, but Brian Moore is no joke, and he is a very, very good fighter, and I think that's a cracking matchup. That could be fighter tonight, depending on how it goes. But both of the, you know, I, I mentioned the word cracking there. Both of these guys can crack as well, and uh, I wouldn't be surprised if someone got a big shot early, but really looking forward to that fight. That's, that's the type of fight I kind of hope it goes, maybe two and a half or three rounds, because I want to see more of it, you know. <laughs> I want to see the kind of, the skills both lads have this played and I'm, I'm really really looking forward to uh, to that one I'm looking forward to a lot I probably said that phrase maybe three or four times here but I, I am can't wait to get back to MMA as well and I'm sure we'll do a show afterwards talking about um you know this card and how good it's back to be back you know we were back a few months ago as well but it was a little bit different you know there were still kind of restrictions going on in Ireland The I know the ceremonial wins oddly aren't open to the public which is a bit weird but there will be fans around more and there was fans the last time but you know you couldn't go into a pub across the road you couldn't you know the fans couldn't gather beforehand they weren't allowed into the hotel to like meet the fighters afterwards and before all that around the fight we've ever been at a fight it, it matters and those things really are make something and uh, it felt like last week everyone showed up an hour before or, or uh, a couple of months ago when the fight happened everyone showed up an hour before the card and we did the, the scrums and stuff afterwards and when we came out everyone was gone you know and that does that just doesn't feel that doesn't feel like an mma event an mma event is more like a family event it's more like oh you'll have a point with the fighters afterwards like you know if we want to see the killers in there brandon flowers has gone home like you won't see him but you probably will if, if you head into the, the the hotel afterwards. You might see Peter Queeley inside or, or Sinead Kavanagh or, or someone like that. So it's, uh, yeah, I don't know. I'm not having a tangent there now, but it's going to be great to be uh, to be back to, uh, to, to real proper MMA with uh, basically all the restrictions gone in, in Ireland. I think masks is the only thing we have left. So you get over that look and it's going to be very, very good. But the two top fights here, Liam McCourt and Sinead Kavanagh and in the main event. Let me talk about the main event first because I, I, I want to talk about the, the historic nature, I suppose, of Liam McCourt and Sinead Kavanagh. Uh, the main event is a very interesting one and I'm going to talk about it from an Irish MMA point of view for a second because we've seen in the past and I've talked to, to my good friend Andrew McGahan and others who were at the, the very, very early days of Irish MMA, uh, you know, when, when there's some big fights put on that didn't have Irish people in them and... You know, arenas emptied. Now, I'm not saying Peter Queeley will fight and it'll be over and there'll be no one in the arena for the main event, but I could see people leaving before the, the middleweight title. And that's a mad thing to say. Now, watch out for it. it. Probably, look, if I was to bet, 
I would say a tiny percentage of people will leave. But it's it's something I'll definitely be looking out for. We've been at a fight before when, when Lee McCourt headlined against Judah Ruiz. It was it was a weird fight. It wasn't the right fight for Lee at the headline. I think if Lee a headline now, especially against Sinead, there'd be no one leaving. But it just wasn't the right fight at the time. And a massive percentage of people left, probably up to you know twenty twenty five percent of people left. You could you could see it, uh, and I wonder if that'll happen on Friday. Now, I, as I said, wait and see. I don't think so, but wait and see. But uh, that and that's it from the, the the Irish MMA point of view. We've wanted these big fights. I really appreciate the big fights being here, but also at the same time we want to see the Irish people in those big fights as well. And when they're not, it's a little bit of a risk for Bellator, but uh, we, we'll see how it goes anyway. But as the fight itself, um, a very, very interesting fight. You know, the, the fight, the two fights that stick out that I've gone back and watched for Gegard Musasi, and maybe they shouldn't be the ones that stick out, but are King Mo and the Rafael Lovato Jr. fight where he was taken down and taken down and taken down. And we know what Van der Voort's going to try to be doing. He's going to try to take him down and take him down and take him down. And look, that's the key to me to this fight. If he can take him down and continue to take him down, uh, look, Van der Voort will win that fight. Now, if he could take him down and take him down and then stop being able to take him down, that's a different story. Musassi's not going to give up and he's going to be there for the full five rounds. So it could be very interesting that way. But if he can't take him down, I think Musassi, you know, will have a bigger advantage there. Um... I just think his striking will be too much. I think his jab will be too much. Now, Van der not the worst striker in the world. He hits hard. And, uh, you know, he, he comes inside with, with big shots. It reminds you a little bit of Logan Storley at the weekend. He's with improving striking and everything like that. But you would have to favor uh, Gegard on the feet if it goes there. Look, it's one of those fights. It's it's not. And, and you know, the Liam McCourt, you know, having a fight is probably a, a bit similar in terms of, like, it, it doesn't take a genius to kind of break down this fight. If Van der Voort gets it to the ground, he'll he, that'll be his best chance of winning. If not, Musassi will probably win it on the feet. But you, you never know. Van der Voort might land a big shot. I also think Musassi could take him down because Musassi is good takedowns he's good jiu-jitsu very good on the ground as well and like if Musassi just gets taken down it's absolutely not over there either I'm not saying that but Van der Voort's best way to win is to get that takedown um, so a very interesting fight with lots of very different uh, integers how to win I think Musassi will be a big favourite and rightly so but uh, Van der Voort has absolutely earned that shot um, 11 and 0 might be a little bit early might be a little bit early, but everyone's going to be a little bit early when you're talking about Gegard Masassi and the amount of fights he's at. But the one thing you can look at for Van der Ford, uh, look, as, as I mentioned there, Masassi has advantages in m- almost every area of the game and has not maybe advantages in almost every, every area, but it's very good in every area. But Van der Ford has those fights, the King Mo fight, the Rafael Lovato Jr. fight, to give him kind of that heart. To, to know how to do it and to know how to beat him so that's what he'll be looking at I'm, I'm looking forward to it and I, I think I don't think he'll be the best fight in the world honestly but uh, it'll be a, it'll be a good battle and Van der Ford, I don't think will give anything up Musassi not give anything up easy but I don't think Van der Ford will give up on anything easy if that makes sense so I'm looking forward to, to that one and I'd probably have a bet for that uh, in the betting show coming up this week Right, the uh, the people's main event, uh, you know, to steal a phrase from Ariel Hawani, but I, I think he'd allow me to steal it for this one. It's Liam McCord versus Sinead Cavanagh. The number, let me just look at it here, the number four ranked Bellator featherweight in Liam McCord, the number five ranked uh, Bellator featherweight in Sinead Cavanagh. And this is a type of fight, you know, maybe people outside of, of Ireland don't maybe understand it or are thinking like, oh, yeah, you know, we've, we've seen both of them fight. They, oh, they, you know, Sinead lost to Cyborg. He has only seven fights in. What this is a fight that is kind of historic in a way that for years and years and years, Irish MMA people really didn't want to see Irish fighters fight each other. And now we've seen it. The, the Irish National Amateur Championships are on this week. We've seen it. We've seen Norman Park versus uh, Paul Redmond is a fight I've mentioned a few times this week. And we absolutely have seen it before. But at this scale... You know, with two ranked fighters right up the top, world ranked fighters right up the top. We've never seen anything like this. And for women's MMA as well, it's massive. It's absolutely massive. As I mentioned, there were the amateur nationals this week, crowned national women's champions. It's a long time since Ashling Daly was the only one doing it, you know. And we've had some great fighters since, like Sir Catherine Cost uh, again, and, and uh, you know, Sinead and Nia and, and Dee Begley and Sean Abandon is making our pro debut coming up. And I'm probably forgetting, you know, five or six, but there's, there's loads of. of uh, um, you know, women's MMA fighters emerging in Ireland, and it's absolutely fantastic to see. And this is really, really, this is really big for women's MMA in the sport, MMA, or in the country. Sorry, just the sport itself in the country as well. I, I think it's it's a historic fight, and it's one I think we will look back on in years to come and say, "Wow, I, 
I can't believe that kind of emerged so quickly and happened so quickly. Um, and even now to look at it and, and say that, I, I think we absolutely can. And that's, uh, it, it's great. It's great for Irish MMA. And I think, look, I've, I've gone, what, what am I now? 28 minutes in, nearly 29 minutes in. And I, maybe I mentioned Conor McGregor once, but as a training partner of, of, of Lee Hammond, we... Irish MMA is this now we have a card we can have a good card that everyone's looking forward to and there's hardly a mention of Conor McGregor even you know and that's big for Irish MMA because the scene has kind of expanded and and uh, become a real thing and you know maybe it hasn't had the success that many had hoped yet but you know, being ranked at the top of the rankings, like the the, the three people here, uh, Brian Moore could very well be a fourth one if he uh, if he gets to win at the weekend. And James Gallagher is ranked, and Charlie Ward I think is ranked, absolutely fantastic. And this Liam McCourt and, and Sinead Kavanagh um, fight is, uh, you know, it's a very interesting fight because look, Sinead, the national boxing champion, Liam McCourt, the BJJ black belt, with uh, I I think she's a judo black belt if I'm not mistaken as well. Her judo is fantastic, very. Big and strong Lee is. Sinead, you know, hits very, very hard when she's given the opportunity to. Leah's hands have improved over the last while, but have they improved enough to box I come with someone like Sinead? I probably not. I think Leah would probably say that herself as well. Look, would she be confident on herself to remain to remain safe on the feet for a while before she did something else or to set something else? Absolutely. Would she go into a boxing match or a fifteen minute stand up match against Sinead? I'd say probably not. And it would the opposite would be the same. Sinead will want to keep that fight standing. She will not want to go to the ground with Leah and catch yourself in a submission or get Leah on top of her Leah you know she's so strong and tall and heavy and she thought I was surprised actually this week uh, she when I talked to her she said she's thinking about going to Bantamweight um, she struggled to make the weight before but I, I you know hopefully fingers crossed it'll all be good for this uh, but it's it's a really really intriguing fight and uh, I'm looking forward to seeing what they both produce how they come out and fight look how they'll come out and fight I think Sinead will try to be lucid on the outside land her shots, jab around and get Leah to, to kind of come after her. Leah will be going after her to put her against the cage, use her jaw to, judo to throw her, to get her on the ground and try to, you know, uh, ground and pound her or submit her. And I, that's as simple as the fight needs to be broken down, I think. That's what we're going to see here. And, uh, you know, I'm not sure if it'll be a classic fight or, or, or whatever. I, I Look, I, I think it'll be... I think it'll be a good fight. I'm not sure who will win yet. Sitting on the fence a little bit because it is one of those if Leah can get the takedown, she can win it. If she can't, she will win it. So it's really, really one of those for me at the moment. But um, a, a historic fight, a historic nature to fight and a historic card overall uh, with a, a middleweight title on the line in, in Ireland uh, and lots of very good Irish fighters as well. So... Um, I'll leave it at that. I hope everyone enjoyed this breakdown. If you have any uh, questions or requests or anything, hit me up over on Twitter at Sean Sheehan BN. I'm sure we can uh, sort it all out. Um, so, yeah, i leave it at that. Thanks, everyone, for watching. I am Sean Sheehan for Shardog.com, and we'll see you all next time.